Welcome back. You're watching Showdown, where I'm joined by Andrew Baker from the CIS, John Keogh from the Australian Financial Review, and Ed Husick, Labor member for Chifley. Do you think you're going to win your seat? I mean, it's 12%, so presumably you'll walk it, you walk never, it in. You never take anything for granted. You work away and see how you go. It's in the hands of the voters. Will it be a personal indictment on you if your margin goes down? <laughs> yes, they will. <laughs> Absolutely, they will. They, they will, and I'll be shamed and named and... Paraded all over the place by good people like you. Right. I can't believe I called you good. Get, getting to the good, getting to the important, getting to the important issues though, Ed. This is handy. We're going to talk about the economy. I want to get the panel's view on the budget that Wayne Swan handed down. Now, you're in Wayne Swan's caucus. You obviously have a high regard for him. Take us through why you think he's been a good treasurer. Well, I think in terms of this budget in particular, what we've done is made sure, like these are tough but uh, necessary decisions, particularly with Which revenue. Which are the tough decisions? Well, I mean, from you know, for example. Not going ahead, or changing the uh, the baby bonus uh, through to not going well, Tony ahead. Tony Abbott's with the, completely getting rid of the baby bonus, whereas you guys are just scaling it back. Where, uh, well, I mean, he can um, he can explain that uh, as well. Um, the fair ta uh, the uh, family tax benefit part A, not going ahead with that, and also holding back on tax cuts. I mean, these are decisions that of themselves won't. You know, they're not greeted with cheers in the electorate. But, but when you needed. spend too much. That's what you have to well, do. Well, forty-three billion dollars of uh, cuts is nothing to sneeze at. Only two. Well, hang, also, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got to take you to tax on that. It's forty-three billion of okay. saves. Now, sixty percent of those are tax increases. Only forty percent are cuts. And of the forty-three billion, only two billion are in the next financial year. Almost all of it is in the out years when you guys won't be in government anymore. Well, they're uh, at the same time too. When they these things hit on the ground, they're not necessarily, as I come back to the point I was making earlier, aren't necessarily popular. But given what we're but doesn't that just tell you that it's a politically bad budget and a silly budget, given the, that they're not actually doing anything in the here and now when you have control, um, but rather you're doing it in the out years where it's going to be Tony Abbott. Uh, and Joe Hockey that will have control. The politically worse uh, thing to do, I mean, it would be easy to uh, go in an election with bags full of cash and hand them out left, right and centre, um, but I don't think that's the right thing uh, to do, particularly in terms of this climate. So, um, you know, we talked earlier about, for instance, or made you know, reference to, for example, paid parental leave, and also the other thing that doesn't get mentioned as much is this notion of taking money to pay polluters through direct action and what that does to the budget as well. Um, which simply is irresponsible. There's no defence for that, that type of policy to be included in this climate. Mm. John, so, your reaction to that? Oh, I, I totally agree that direct action is an absolute joke of an economic policy and I think most people in the coalition would pro probably privately admit that. But mm. on the budget more generally, I think it was one of Wayne Swan's better budgets, but it's all relative, isn't it? I, I don't think it was a good budget, I think it was a better one. Uh, they did make some reasonable cuts to baby bonuses and some of the middle class welfare, but uh, they have locked in a lot of big spending programs in the out years beyond the Ford estimates. Now they claim they have the revenue to offset that, but I still think some of those forecasts on revenue are very optimistic. I don't I, call them optimistic, they're a joke. I, don't I mean, they're, I know they're Martin, a joke, that's what they are. Martin hey, you, Parkinson you can't defended pull, them today. Oh, well, but of course he did, because he was presiding over it yeah. as the head of Treasury. But so what, his let, voice doesn't count? No, the simple fact is that if you can't over 12 months project with anything resembling accuracy what the budget's going to be, how can you project 12 years forward for spending for NDIS and Gonski when we don't even know the exact details of the Gonski reforms, firstly, and we don't even know what the trials will throw up in relation to the NDIS? Andrew? I think the budget's reforms, well, the, the, the proposals are fairly timid when it comes to cutting middle class welfare. They've completely ignored the age pension, completely ignored the DSP, and that's where the real money is. Combine you want to slice the age pension? Ideally, you would um, optimise it so that more people spend more of their own money on their retirement by um, aligning superannuation with the age pension. So, so well, what can you do about the age pension in terms of you talk about the you know, the age pension? These are some of Australia's you know poorest people, and they are on the age pension because they don't have their own retirement savings. Now, by all means, do what you can to encourage retirement savings for the future so less people are on the age pension, but you can't seriously cut it, can you? Well, you can increase the uh, the eligibility age. At the moment, 65. It's moving up to 67 by 2023. Continue increasing it beyond that to, say, 69 or 70. That's one way to one way to reduce or increase the number of people. But that's pretty course. much the only way, isn't it? I mean, I, I, don't, well, I can see the arguments for that well, as we all live longer. Well, there are parents' generation from, uh, you know, th those that didn't have um, superannuation in place and would be completely um, uh, faced with the prospect that they, you know, wouldn't be able to rely if there wasn't the age pension there. They couldn't conceivably rely on their superannuation because it had kicked in too late. 
So um, there Let's is an issue in the there. Mission and on top of that, accounts got smashed in the GFC. the GFC, and it's slowly repairing now. And there have been people that lost so much money on their super that actually had to go re-enter the workforce as well. But having said that, too, you know, super as itself of itself provided a massive pool of national savings to be able to uh, give business the ability to invest as well. And I just think that there are a whole lot of things. I mean, I just think it's too easy to, to you know, I've got a difference of opinion naturally on terms of cutting age pensions. Well, why is this government, uh, you know, reducing the baby bonus and saying that's acceptable, but it's bringing into place a school's bonus? Uh, what's the difference? They're all middle class welfare. Is, isn't this a matter of, you know, sort of, picking one form of middle class welfare over another when they should both be scrapped if we're going to be serious about trying to you know, fiscally tighten things? Yeah, I think that's right. I think there's probably far too much middle class welfare in the budget. I mean, they've introduced some means tests, Labor, to their credit. Uh, but, you know, the Liberals have a bit to answer for on this as well. Their generous pay parental leave scheme, which I might point out I'm going to benefit from in about six or nine months' time. So, but it, it, I think it's just way, way too generous. And so I, I wouldn't think bet they'll side, have it in by then, don't you worry. That's I think a good you'll point, probably Peter. just miss out. But as Martin <laughs> Parkinson, the Treasury Secretary, said today, he said, we need to have a real debate and discussion about what government can actually provide for the community and the expectations of the community in terms of what government can do for them in terms of spending programs need to be revisited. Um, on the issue of uh, the school kids bonus itself, in my uh, neck of the woods I do get reports for example of kids leaving school early to ha help families um, you know, uh, be able to meet their costs of living. Um, this actually provides an important way of being able to fund and ensure or take a disincentive out of the system. Well if you guys weren't slicing so into the, re into the payments the for single parents well, um, I've spoken then that on would that, be a problem. I've, I've spoken on that previously and I actually pushed as one one backbencher for uh, changing the work test to ensure that single parents could work more without losing their their um, their benefits. So um, the other thing about paid parental leave, which I don't get, so we've got this. I think it's it, you know certainly we've been pointing to the fact that revenues have fallen. They've fallen because the dollar is so high. Um, externally focused companies who are making their money in international trade aren't making as much profits down. Our tax falls as a result. Why in this climate? Would you choose then to put a levy on 3,300 companies in the way that um, the paid parental leave scheme of the coalitions envisages in an environment where revenues are soft because companies aren't making the same but amount of money? But you know your problem though, Ed Husick, the, the Labor sure you'll government's me. problem is that whatever issues some of us, me included, Andrew I know as well, uh, John almost certainly as well, have despite his personal reasons to benefit with this generous paid parental leave scheme and what it means for the budget and putting more company tax on to pay for it, etc. Whatever the problems with some of their policies, it just doesn't matter because your Prime Minister is so unpopular, your Treasurer is perceived to be so incompetent, the polls are a wipeout for you guys. None of it matters because the Labor government is losing one way or the other. I'll tell you why it does, because I think uh, as people get closer to the election, I think there'll be a lot more of a serious focus placed on both sides of politics. Um, and I get that when I'm out you know, meeting with uh, constituents. I had one, for example, recently say to me, Why, what is fair that a person that's on much higher income than me um, gets three times the size of my pension in the paid parental leave scheme that is being put forward by the coalition? Now, that's what people well, on the ground it's a are saying. Because that, that's that would what be the people, answer that. That's what people are saying. Um, well, in actual fact, our paid parental leave scheme of $300 million is designed to ensure that for people that don't have in the workplace a, a parental leave scheme that they're covered in one way, shape or form and I think um, it's about half roughly of the people that have benefited from it earn under 45, 43,000 a year. So this but is let me play devil's advocate. Role. I mean, in terms of Tony Abbott's paid parental leave scheme, uh, I think you both have, have some issues with it financially. Mm. Uh, if it's a workplace entitlement to have um, maternity leave, I'm not sure if you agree with that, but if you do, then surely having it at the minimum wage is inappropriate and it should be roughly tied to your wage. Otherwise, uh, blokes that are getting their long service leave after seven or ten years uh, should have that at the minimum ra wage rather than paid uh, at their actual salary. Well, for starters, it's um, capped at 150 grand a year, so it's not not quite aligned with um, not, it's not quite a wage replacement scheme. But it, um, do you really need? To, I don't think we need to pay it for uh, six months. I think you could cap it maybe three months, have the same sort of scheme, or even reduce that 75,000 th 75, threshold to maybe but six months. Is, is what experts tell us is the ideal time uh, for a parent to stay home with their child. 
I don't think the budget can afford it though. Why are we putting a tax on big companies? That is actually not going to be good for our economy, particularly multinational companies that want to come and invest here and create jobs. I think it but is John, a disincentive. John, what does it tell us about this government that those same companies that are going to cop that new tax from Tony Abbott are mm. still prepared... They're not saying that they'll cop that. Still, no, no, they, There's they been a lot like of reaction it, from business saying there that There has they're... been reaction, but mm. business overwhelmingly, including those companies, is prepared to wear that and get Abbott rather than not cop that but, but get another three saying. years I, of the Labor I genuinely government. do not well, know how you're saying that. Now, I mean, I think business probably needs to speak up more. My colleague Jeff Kitney has been writing about this in the Financial Review for the past couple of weeks. That big business does need to step up and criticise the paid parental leave scheme more openly, but at the same time I can understand why they're not, because they have had, unfortunately, enough of the Labor government. But Ed, you think that's right, isn't it? I mean, you're shaking your head. I know big business doesn't like this uh, tax for the paid parental leave scheme, but they I've are, by Acu and large, copying it to get Abbott rather than, and hoping maybe that he'll change it in government, rather than being prepared to be heavily critical of it and back the Labor government as well, an alternative. Look, the reason why I um, shook my head when you were talking, um, and I'm surprised you pointed it out, because more often than not I am doing that with you, but the, the fact of the matter is I've seen Aki representatives, for example, speaking and saying this is a bad thing. I've seen other business representatives do the same. They should speak up on this. They're right to, because in this climate, as I've said, you know, where company, you know, the revenue that we're getting from company tax is lower, the company tax receipts are lower, it is insane to drive that even further. And on top of that, we actually wanted to cut the corporate tax rate and the coalition refused to support it. So I, I just think that this well, is... Well, you guys could have still tried to pass it through Parliament, but you didn't. You decided not no, to test it. No, we didn't because we... Oh, well, frankly... You decided not to test knowing it. The, but knowing the, the uh, nature of the Parliament and the position of all the, the key parties But you can't this, sit there and say, we wanted a company you, tax you if you're not prepared the, to test it in point? the Parliament. But... What, what is an academic exercise or what? When you've got the Coalition and the Greens saying they won't support it, the Greens because they don't want to see corporate tax lowered and the Opposition because they wanted to basically secure political advantage, I mean, yeah, you know what the outcome's going to be. I don't no think... chance to reply. We are right out of time. Ed Husick, Member for Chifley, thanks for joining us. John Keogh from the Financial Review, appreciate your company as well. And Andrew Baker from the Centre for Independent Studies, thanks for your company. Thank you. Thanks for watching. We are out of time. You have been watching Showdown. I'll see you again on Friday for Contrarians.